Okay, so I'm just going to go through um, what we would normally cover in uh, lab today, if we were actually in uh, person. Um, and then just quickly, what the, the purpose of the, the lab is going to be the, the different experiments. The reason we're going to be doing them is, uh, one, we want to reinforce what we're going to be covering in lecture. Um, so the, the labs hopefully are going to line up with uh, sort of what we're covering at that point in the, the lecture, and we'll be able to kind of see those concepts in the, uh, in the lab. We'll get to, to practice those techniques. We'll get to see what, uh, we'll get to actually visualize um, those different concepts and topics. Uh, and then in addition to that, I'm also gonna try to, to mix in different um, demonstrations and things within the, the lecture itself. <clears throat> um, but like I said, that's also gonna be the, the chance where you can practice with the, the different techniques. Um, from what I've heard in the, the past, it seems like a lot of the, the, the high schools and uh, just schools around Washington don't allow you to, to actually do a lot of the, the chemistry uh, experiments that other states um, seem to allow. Um, so this may be the, the first time you get to do some of the, the different things in the lab, and you also get to practice working with uh, different types of chemicals. So we'll see acids and bases, um, we'll see solutions, we'll work with solids, um, just a whole bunch of different things throughout. And then the, the goal is to achieve all of this um, in, a, in a safe manner. So uh, what we're thinking in terms of safety is protecting um, yourself while you're doing the experiments, your, uh, your classmates, so everybody around you, myself, and then ultimately the environment um, as well. And we're going to kind of go through just some rules uh, and expectations for um, sort of how we're going to conduct ourselves in the lab uh, so that we can ensure that we will um, keep everybody safe. <clears throat> and then uh, next week in the, the lab, or even maybe Monday or Tuesday in class, I may actually do this just to, to save us a little time in lab on um, Wednesday. I haven't decided yet. Um, but these are just some of the, the rules and expectations for sort of how you're expected to conduct yourself. And then um, you'll sort of sign these uh, next week and just sort of say that you agree to um, follow these rules. And then if you sort of break these rules, some of them you may not be able to allow, you may not be able to complete the, the lab that week just for, for safety reasons. Other ones I may just remind you to, to put your goggles back on. So there's sort of a, a degree of the, the importance or the sort of the, the outcome of what's gonna happen if you, you break the rules, but ultimately um, these are just gonna be in place to make sure that you keep yourself safe and keep everybody else safe as well. Um, and the, the first one, the, the big one is eyewear. Um, so when we go through the, the lab drawer check-in next week, which we'll, we'll do at the, the start of lab, just to make sure you have everything in your drawer that you're going to need throughout the, the, the quarter. Um, one of those items is going to be a, a pair of safety goggles or safety glasses. There's a few different styles um, available. There's pretty much one type, and then there's a few others just sort of mixed in. Um, so if you have a, if you, whatever drawer you wind up picking next week, if it's got a, a pair that you don't really like or doesn't fit your face well, um, we can try to find you a different one, particularly if you're, you're still wearing a mask. Some of the, the different types of goggles fog up a little bit more. Um, so if you're still wearing a mask, we can try to find you one that will work a little bit better with that. Uh, but the, the goggles must be worn at all times. And this is just to, to keep your eyes safe um, because some of the, the chemicals we work with are going to be um, damaging, especially if they get in your eyes. Um, and with that, you can't really get that back if you, you lose your eyesight. So we just want to make sure that we always do have that, that protection there. And then with this, um, the, the labs, a lot of times you're going to finish the experiment and then you'll have time to work on the, the calculations and the post lab questions and things like that. Um, so even when you're working on that type of stuff, if you're done with the experiment, you're still going to want to make sure you keep your, your eyewear on um, just to make sure that if people are still working around you, if they spill something or something goes wrong, that doesn't uh, still get in your eye. Um, and then with this, if you wear glasses, um, I would still recommend wearing the, the goggles because they tend to offer a little bit more protection sort of on the, the sides of your face in case something spills that way. Um, but sometimes it's tough to kind of wear the, the goggles over the glasses. So if you wear glasses, that's fine. And you don't, uh, you don't need to wear the goggles if you don't want to. Um, and then you also see at the, the top here, contact lenses, uh, some chemistry, uh, professors and instructors, depending on uh, what school you're at and exactly what lab you're in, um, don't want you to wear to, uh, don't want you to wear contact lenses for for safety reasons. I don't have a problem with you doing it. Um, I wear contact lenses myself, um, 
And it's really not an issue, especially if you're wearing your, your eye protection the uh, entire time, it's not gonna really matter. Um, and if you are wearing your eye protection the entire time, you're never gonna need to do, uh, use the, the eye wash station. That's just gonna come up if you do get something in your eye and we have to rinse it out to make sure we sort of dilute whatever that is and sort of um, reduce the, the potential damage um, it can have. Essentially just if we add more water to it, it's sort of just drowning out whatever that uh, chemical may be um, to a degree. Um, and these are located on both sides of the room, just sort of near the, the fronts of the, the classrooms. And like I said, if you're wearing your eye protection, you're never gonna actually have to use these. Um, and then just sort of as a, a deterrent um, or encouragement, I guess, to uh, wear your eyewear, a deterrent to, to not have to use these eye wash stations. Um, I've never had to use them myself, uh, I do know a couple people that have used them in the, the past, either because they did get something in their eye or they were just, um, for whatever reason, they tested it out. Um, but they are somewhat painful, might not be the best word, but they are uh, uncomfortable and you do have to do it for, for several minutes. So it's going to be a little bit longer than you probably expect. Um, so it's just going to be sort of a hassle and something you want to avoid in addition to the, the pain and just the, the potential damage coming from whatever that chemical may be initially. Um, and then similarly near those eye wash stations, we also have the, the safety showers. Um, so the, the safety shower in the picture here is a little different than the, the one we have in the, the lab room. It's sort of set up the, the same where they're gonna be located. Um, you can kind of even see the, the eye wash station down here. Um, they're gonna be located in a similar position in the, the lab where we'll have our eye wash stations and the, the safety showers in the, the same place. But instead of having a, a handle that pulls down for the, the safety showers, we're just going to have a handle kind of in the, the wall here that you would pull down. Um, and the, the reason you'd use a, a safety shower is if you spill a, a large quantity of um, some chemical on you, like an acid or a base, something that can potentially um, do a little damage to you, you would go to the, the safety shower just so that, again, similar to the, the eye wash station, we can kind of uh, dilute whatever that chemical is, hopefully reduce some of the, the damage. Um, and then in addition to... Um, just kind of standing under the, the shower, uh, depending on what that chemical is, you may also want to um, actually remove uh, like your clothing. So if it's on your shirt, you may want to remove that or your pants um, just so that it's not as, uh, not as much of it's contacting your skin. Um, if that's the case, what I would do is have everybody else leave the room. Um, but we don't typically work with uh, quantities large enough that would really require you to use the, the safety shower. Um, and then also if you're just using pretty much common sense, you would never really have to use this one. At least for the, the experiments we're doing. Some other more complicated things could go wrong in uh, more sort of challenging experiments, um, but the ones we do don't get too, too complicated. Um, and then just some other safety stuff, the, the fire extinguishers, first aid kit, just in the, the front of the classroom. So if we ever need those, um, the, the fire extinguisher, uh, if that ever comes up, I would probably just, again, have everybody leave the room and then I would be the, the one to use that. Um, but if anything does happen, if you ever hurt, anything breaks, anything spills, um, just let me know. If anything uh, ever happens where you're injured, let me know. We can try to figure out the best way to, to go about it. If it's something small, we may be able to to handle it with the, the first aid kit. If it's something more serious, um, we'll have to send you somewhere else. Um, and then if something breaks in terms of the glassware, that's fine. Obviously, we don't want it to happen, but if it happens, it's not a, a huge deal. Um, we can just replace it, uh, but just let me know so we can clean it up, make sure that there's no uh, little pieces kind of remaining anywhere that's gonna cut somebody uh, later on. Um, and if it does break, I'll be the one that cleans it up usually just to, to kind of reduce the chance that uh, you do get cut. Uh, and then similarly with spills, let me know if something spills. Uh, like I said, we don't typically work with extremely large quantities. So if something does spill, it would probably be a, a fairly small one that wouldn't be too much of a hassle to deal with, um, but I'll still be typically the, the one that cleans it up. Um, but I will let you know if there's uh, something like an acid that we're working with and we spill, I'll always wait, let you know where the, the base is located just so that we can kind of neutralize that um, because we will want to neutralize it just before we clean it up. And in terms of clothing, um, we've got a couple rules just to make sure we've got kind of uh, the, um, we don't have exposed skin that's gonna be open to just sort of the, the chemicals coming into contact with it. And with that, we're really looking uh, pretty much just uh, from your waist down 
because that's going to be the, the spot if something does spill on the lab bench that's going to be the spot it's going to uh sort of roll up the, the lab bench and then contact you on your, your pants or your your feet um so with that we just want to make sure we're wearing uh closed toed shoes so we don't want to wear sandals or anything like that uh anything where the the um your lower body is exposed so the same thing with your your pants you're going to want to make sure you're wearing pants instead of uh skirts or or shorts and then um, if you are wearing jeans, just make sure they're not the, the tight that has a whole bunch of holes in the, the front of them. Um, and then this is gonna be important as we go kind of later into the, the quarter, when it starts to get a little bit warmer, you may just want, if you're gonna wear shorts that day, you may just wanna wear uh, or bring an extra pair of sweatpants or something that, so you can just throw them on top um, while you're in the lab and then you can take them off just when you're done. Uh, and then with, uh, if you have longer hair, Sometimes we will be working with uh, Bunsen burners and things like that. So in that case, you will kind of want to tie it up just that if you, you turn around, it doesn't kind of uh, whip around and then just accidentally get into that flame um, or anything like that. And then even when we're not working with uh, Bunsen burners and things, it would still generally be a, a good practice to, to tie up your hair just so that it doesn't, um, especially if it's really long, just so it doesn't kind of um, accidentally knock into a, a chemical or just knock over some piece of uh, glassware or something like that. Uh, but it's especially important if we do have a, an open flame. Um, and here you can just see sort of the, the different things we're talking about in terms of the, the proper attire. Uh, so the, the middle one here, uh, all checks just because we've got closed toed shoes, pants that go all the way down to the, the ankles. Um, and then it says long sleeve shirt. That's that's ideal just because that offers the, the most protection. It does cover your entire um, arms, obviously. And then we will have gloves uh, available to cover your, your hands. Um, but T-shirts are fine as well. Tank tops even, I don't have a problem with. They're not ideal, but uh, I don't have an issue with that. We're going to be more concerned with the, the pants and then the, the types of shoes that you're wearing. So you can kind of see shorts and skirts uh, we're going to want to avoid. And the, the same thing with sandals and then uh, these types of, they look like ballet flats, I guess, um, but just something that's going to leave the, the top of the, the foot exposed. And again, that's just because if we spill something, it's going to roll off onto the, the lab bench, roll onto the floor, and it's going to contact us on the, the lower part of our body. So that's going to be the, the part that we want to make sure we're protecting. Um, and then just with the, the lab itself, when you um, arrive at lab, if the, the door is open and unlocked, you can come in. If I'm not actually present in the, the lab itself, you can still come in. It's probably just me either being in my office um, or I may have printed something out and I'm just down the hall or getting something in the, the stock room next door. Um, but if the, the door is open and unlocked, you can always come in. If it's not, obviously you just have to, to wait for me to get there, uh, but I should be there well before the, the lab actually starts. So I don't think that should be a problem. And then when you do come in, there will often be, almost always, there'll be uh, different chemicals that are gonna be related to that lab. And then maybe some equipment specific to the, the, that experiment that we're gonna be doing. Um, if that's the case, just make sure you leave that stuff uh, where it is until we actually start the lab. So until I um, tell you to start get going with the, the experiment, just make sure you, you hold off and actually, um, and on actually starting it. And then once you do actually start going through the experiment, uh, you just want to make sure that you're actually performing it as instructed. So this is going to be one of those safety things, just making sure um, you're going about the, the lab in the, the proper manner and doing what you're supposed to be doing. And then if you ever have any questions kind of on what you're supposed to be doing or how you're supposed to be doing something, if, if what you did was correct, um, you can always just kind of stop, take a beat, call me over, I can help you out. Usually the labs don't take the entire um, hour or 50. So you can always uh, sort of take a little bit of a, um, pause and always just call me over and we can figure it out. Um, and then at the, the end of the lab, you just want to make sure, uh, especially if you're in the, the first lab, there's going to be a second group coming in right after you want to make sure it's clean for them. Um, or if you're the, the second group, um, there is, uh, the, the people that set up the, the different experiments. It's not their job to, to clean up the labs. It's not my job to clean up the labs either. Um, so if you do leave the, 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 the lab station messy, what I'm going to do is, um, it's actually going to be a, a deduction from the lab score for that report. And I'll cover that one um, in a second. But you'll just want to make sure you leave your, your station um, just clean. So just the, the chemicals and stuff that was on the, the lab bench, just leave that organized. And if anything um, spilled, you would just want to clean that up, basically. Um, and then with the, the lab, since we will be working with different chemicals, we obviously um, don't want to be ingesting those chemicals. We're not going to be tasting or smelling them. In the lab, there will be, I think, a couple labs where uh, labs where it asks you to kind of waft the chemical. Um, I really, 
I would say just uh, not really even necessary. I think it's kind of a, a weird thing to do. Um, but in that case, it won't be a problem. But even with that, you just kind of want to wave your hand and just get sort of a, a, a little sniff of it rather than putting your, your nose right near whatever that chemical is. So if you do smell something, if it says that in the, the procedure, that's the only time you would do it. But even when you're smelling that, you would still just want to kind of use that wafting technique. Um, and then similarly, uh, we don't want to um, ingest the, the chemicals. Uh, if we bring our food or drink into the lab, we could still ingest the, the chemicals kind of indirectly that way just by having them contaminate um, the, the food or drink. So with that, we're going to keep it outside of the lab. Um, so I'll, I often leave my, my water bottle outside of the, the door. So as you come in, you may see that on the, the ground there. And then I just, uh, every once in a while, just take a step outside grab a drink as I need it, put it back down and then just come back into the lab. Um, you can do the, the same thing. If you want, you can keep the, the water bottle in your backpack and then just take it out, take the water bottle out into the hall, get a drink, put it back in your backpack when you come in, um, or you can just go to the water fountain at the, the end of the hallway. Um, but we just wanna make sure we're not taking any um, food or drink actually in the, the lab room itself. And then the second point, the, the pipettes, um, we use those to essentially just measure out very specific amounts of different liquids. Um, and in the, the previous uh, century, um, like I would say probably chemists were doing it maybe in the 80s was maybe the latest, I would guess. Um, but I would think probably even before that people stopped doing it. Uh, but every once in a while, an older chemist will use a, a pipette like a straw and kind of just um, suck up the, the chemical that way. We're, we'll never do that. We're always gonna use what are called pipette bulbs. And they essentially just allow us to um, just kind of turn a knob and it, uh, it um, allows us to, to, to get the liquid that way. And then with the, the chemicals, um, not all of them are gonna be harmful. And then the, there's gonna be a degree to um, how dangerous they are, but we always want to assume all chemicals are going to be dangerous, are going to be poisonous, flammable, corrosive, whatever. Um, we just want to assume that just so that we can act with sort of an abundance of caution uh, and just make sure that everybody's protected rather than uh, the, the reverse. Um, so in addition to, to kind of just going about the, the lab in the, the proper way and making sure we're, we're doing the, the experiment uh, correctly. At the, the end of the experiment, we also have to make sure that we dispose of these chemicals properly. Um, so when we get into the, the lab room, you'll see in the back of the room, we're going to have a couple different waste containers. Uh, there'll be the, the organic, inorganic, uh, and those are going to be for liquids. And then there's just going to be a, a solid waste container as well. Um, the, the reason for this is because these chemicals, once we're done with the experiment, this they're still going to be, um, some of them at least are still going to be uh, dangerous or flammable, corrosive. Um, so they're going to be things that we don't want to introduce into the environment. So they're not going to be things that we just want to pour down the drain or throw in the trash. So we're always going to dispose of them in the, the correct waste containers. Um, and then with those, I'll always make sure to, at the start of the lab, I'll always give a little bit of a mini lecture. I'll explain exactly where each of those are located um, or exactly where like each of the, the different products of that experiment where they're going to get thrown out, whether it's the, the organic, inorganic, or solid waste. Um, every once in a while, there may be stuff that can go down the drain, but I'll always make sure to tell you uh, explicitly uh, what can get thrown down the drain or what can just get thrown in the, the regular trash. Uh, and if you're ever unsure, just always make sure to ask me. Um, this is going to be one of the, the big things because we want to make sure that we're not polluting the environment um, as we do these experiments. Uh, and then ultimately, if you're wondering what happens with these waste containers, um, the, the school does pay a company to, to come take them, and then they properly dispose of the waste rather than us just either pouring it down the drain um, or just kind of disposing of it directly into the environment. Uh, and then just in terms of the, the grades, uh, we will have nine experiments total, so we will have nine reports, and then each of them are going to be worth uh, 20 points. At the, the end of the quarter, I will drop the, the lowest grade. Um, those 20 points are going to be uh, split up into a, a pre-lab quiz and then a, a report. The, the quiz is usually going to be worth five points. Sometimes it may be worth a little bit more or a little bit less. Um, and then the, the report portion will just be worth the, the remaining. Um, so if the, the pre-lab is five, the report will be worth the, the, the other 15. 
Um, and like I said, uh, if you do leave the, the station messy, and then I or the uh, the the people that set up the labs have to clean up um, your station, that's just going to be a, a couple points of a, a deduction. And then the, the same thing if you're not following those safety rules. If it's something that I continuously have to tell you, um, it's either going to be a, a points deduction from the report, or I'm just going to have you uh, lead the lab, and then you won't be able to complete the experiment, and then you just won't be able to turn in the experiment that way. Um, but that hasn't been a problem with any of the, the labs in the previous two quarters, so I don't think it should be too much of an issue. And then with the, the, the stations, if you always want to make sure that it's just um, clean and that you did a good job, you can always just call me over when you're ready to leave. I can just check it and make sure that uh, everything's good to go. And if there ever is anything that just needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit more, I can just always tell you what that is. And then just with the, the pre-lab quiz and the, the report quick, the, the pre-lab quiz, it's going to be due at the, the start of lab each week. So you'll come into lab, you'll turn it in. Um, and then it's going to be due at the, the start of lab because it's supposed to um, prepare you for the experiment so that you have an idea kind of what you're going to be doing that week and why you're going to be doing it. Um, and may, it may also include maybe some safety things that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of before they even come to the, the experiment. Um, uh, so you'll turn these in at the, the beginning of lab each week. I'll give a little mini lecture to start the lab to, to go over the concept quick, any of the, the safety concerns, maybe any tips or uh, tricks that may help you get through it a little bit easier. Um, and then when you're doing the experiment, I'll be there to, to help you out as you go. I'll always be walking around kind of keeping an eye on everybody, uh, but I'll also grade the, the pre-labs quick just so that I can give those back to you right away. Um, that way, if you uh, if there is a practice calculation on there that you're going to do something similar in the, the report, that way, if you kind of got something a little bit off on the, the pre-lab, you get that feedback right away, and then you can correct it on the, the post-lab. Um, and then with these, the, the pre-labs, you're going to be able to pick them up the, the week before. So for the, the first one, if we were in person, you'd be able to pick it up in lab today, and then you would turn it in in lab next week. Um, currently, it's available on Canvas. Um, but for, for the, the next one, so for next week when we do experiment one, you'll be able to pick up pre-lab two, and then you'll just turn that in the, the following week. And then at that point, you'll be able to pick up pre-lab three, which you'll turn in the, the following week when you actually do experiment three. Um, and then the, the reports, um, those will include, like I said, those will be the, the remaining um, points for the, the 20. Uh, so usually 15, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the exact experiment. Um, but with those, we're going to be including um, the, the data collection and the, the observations that you make during the experiment. So depending on exactly what the experiment is, that'll look a little bit different. Um, but you'll always be sort of recording what you're, you're doing or what you're seeing throughout the experiments. Um, and then you'll use that to uh, answer the, the post-lab questions, which may be calculations based on that data, um, maybe just some sort of concept, conceptual stuff based on the, the observations you saw, um, or just maybe sort of general questions on those different concepts. Um, so maybe sort of similar calculations, just for a, sort of a, a hypothetical um, scenario. Uh, so it can just kind of be a whole bunch of different stuff. But then the, the reports are going to be due the, the following week. Um, so for example, if we want to just think about how experiment one is going to work as a whole, um, the, the pre-lab for experiment one is going to be due at the, the start of lab next week when we actually perform that experiment. And then we'll go through, complete the experiment that day. And then you may, depending on how fast you get through the experiment, you may have some time to work on the, the post-lab questions. If you complete the, the post-lab questions in lab, you can always turn it in right that day. If you're not able to finish them, or if you just want to hold on to it to, to give it a little bit more uh, of a look through, um, you're always welcome to do that because the, the reports won't be due until the, the following week. Um, so for experiment one, it won't be due until you come in um, to do experiment two the, the following uh, Wednesday. So like I said, for uh, next week, pre-lab one will be due at the, the start of lab. Um, it's currently available on Canvas. If you're on campus, you should have free access to, to printing in the, the, the computer lab. Um, and if you're, you're not on campus uh, and you don't have access to a printer at home or uh, anywhere else, you can always kind of just write it on a, a separate piece of paper and bring it in. I'd prefer if you can to do it on the, the, the actual pre-lab um, itself. But if you, if you can't get it printed out, it's totally fine to do it on a separate piece of paper. 
Um, and then the experiment itself, you'll want to usually reference that when you're doing the, the pre-lab, I didn't mention this, but the experiment itself, including the, the procedure, and then it also shows you kind of the, the data table that you'll be filling in. It shows you the, the post-lab questions. So you can always preview the entire thing before the experiment itself. Um, but as you're completing the, the pre-lab, you'll often want to reference the, the experiment. Um, both of those are available in Canvas, and they're actually just both in a, a lab module on the, the Canvas page. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. But finally, just what I want to point out is um, for next week, since we, we didn't meet today, we didn't do the, the lab drawer check-in today, um, next week we will start with that. So you and your partner will go through, just go through the, the drawer quick, make sure everything that you're supposed to have is in there. Um, and then you'll be able to start the, the first experiment. Um, the, the first experiment typically has two parts. The, the first one kind of just being a density portion where you're given an unknown metal. And then you have to determine the, the density of it. Um, to try to identify the, the composition um, or identify just what that metal is, basically. Um, and then the, the second part, you're given a, a mixture of sand and salt. And then we use a couple different processes to, to separate those two. Um, since we have to do the lab drawer check-in, it's going to be a little bit uh, of a time squeeze if we were to do both of those parts of the experiment um, next week. So what we're going to do is only do one of them. And then I'm going to give you fake data for the, the second one. I don't know which part, I haven't decided which one we're gonna do, um, but I'll give you fake data for the second one and then you'll still be able to go through the, the, like the calculation portion of it and answer the, the questions related to it. Um, but we just won't have enough time to really do that, that portion of the experiment itself. Right. And then quickly, what I wanna show you is just the, the Canvas page. Um, so let me just get through the student view here. And then, um, all right, so this is what you should be seeing. Um, so hopefully you saw the announcement I sent out. Um, and again, if you don't have the announcement set up, uh, set up for, for notifications to be sent to like your phone right away, um, I would set those up, just go into account and then you can click on the notifications. And also if you don't have the, the GAC, uh, just alert system set up, so like the, the text messages or the, the emails I think you can get as well, um, I would set those up too. And I can help you with that as well. Um, but for the lab stuff, what I'm going to do is in addition to like, we'll have the, the different chapter modules. So chapter one, we've already got, um, there's also just going to be a, a general lab module. And then I'll add, um, labs two and three and four as we go. Um, but you can see we've got the, the pre-lab here. So you are going to want to print that out if you can, if you don't have a, uh, printer, you can always just write it on a, a separate piece of paper. And then this is gonna be the experiment itself. So you can kind of see the, um, the, the introduction, gives you the, the procedure, the steps that you're gonna follow for that experiment. So intro, background, uh, procedure, then we've got our, our data table. And then for this lab, since like I said, it usually has the, the two parts. This one got formatted a little bit weird. We have a, a similar sort of setup for the, the second piece with a intro, background, procedure, another data table, and then finally, just the, the post-lab questions for this one. Um, but like I said, I'll have the, the, the experiment printed out for you next week. So you don't need that one. You just need to bring the, the, the pre-lab quiz with you. Okay. And then, oops. And then with that, um, I will be posting lectures for the, the remaining um, classes this week so the actual lectures Thursday and Friday um, but if you have questions on any of this or any of that just let me know and I'm always happy to either uh, just answer your message via email or uh, canvas or we can set up a zoom um, either one whatever you prefer